about your group in spring so far? Yeah, it's a steady improvement, you know, day by day. That's kind of what kind of what I anticipated, you know, for the guys who played a, a ton last year. Uh, they're just kind of, I've been keeping them out of a lot of the reps. You know, they'll have a, a lot of reps tomorrow, but just trying to see more of the new guys, the young guys, the, the Brandons, the, uh, the Kilgore, see if he takes another step, the guys who are trying to improve, giving the most of the reps. We've been on a steady incline. I, I've been pleased throughout spring. Yeah, what what have you seen from from Kilgore in, in his second, I think second spring now yeah, too. Second yeah, spring, yeah. So. Uh, tons of improvement. You know, he's been playing both backer spots, uh, just trying to challenge him mentally. You know, he, he wears me out probably the most. You know, he sits in my office. You know, I'm like, as soon as he gets, he's like, I'm out of class. I'm on the way over there. You know, uh, takes me, calls me at night. We're at dinner with my wife last night. My phone rings. My wife's just like, is that Kilgore? Like, he calls me around the same time every night because he's watching the film. He just he wants to be really, really good, you know. And I just, I appreciate the hunger, and uh, it's, it's showing up on the field a lot. A lot of play recognition. He's taking the next step and being more vocal. You know, he's just he's just taking the next step. Is anyone stepping up to take that fifth spot? Uh, that's kind of what we're trying to see. I've been rolling the guys kind of uh, combination-wise to see. Uh, Justin Metlock's done a really good job of learning the defense uh, quickly. Uh, he's a very talented athlete. Uh, you know, he brings a different dynamic than the other guys who are more traditional linebackers. Justin's a really athletic guy uh, that, I, that we're excited about. Brandon uh, Mizono's taking the, the next step. You know, he's another bigger body guy. Didn't play a ton of linebacker in high school, so kind of spent last year learning. Uh, but now he's like a functional linebacker, you know, who can run and hit, who loves football. Obviously, Quan's still here, so he's been playing both spots. So, I mean, it's, it, I've been rolling the guys day in and day out. And Zach Smith's also here, a new guy. He's trying to find his way through. He's, he's flashed at times. So it's uh, we got a really good group, a group that I'm really excited about. And I think we'll kind of – we'll go through spring, we'll go through summer, and then we'll figure that out, you know, through fall camp. But right now, I'm just trying to make sure everybody has a fair opportunity uh, to, to have a spot. I was about to say with Zach, he played a little bit of safety at Red Oak right. and, you know, some linebacker. What's – what have you seen from him as he's, you know, made that full adjustment? To he's a uh, he's a he's a very like instinctive football player, you know, who, who's smart and because he did a lot at Red Oak. You know, you saw him play safety, you saw him blitz off the edge, you saw him play backer, saw him play apex Sam. Like, so he is a very like instinctual football player. He's just he's just waiting for everything to slow down. He's trying to figure out where his class is. You know, he's trying to figure out why coach is yelling at me. He's just trying to figure it all out. But through it all, he doesn't panic, though. He, he always has a very he's, – he's a very calm person, which uh, for younger players, that's often – that's like that's not the case, right? Younger guys are pretty erratic. They're kind of like they get flustered easily. Uh, Zach's very cool. He's very calm. He's just working through the process. Uh, but he is talented, though. He's, he runs very well. He's very athletic. He's grown a little bit. He's a little taller. He's probably put on about 10 pounds since he's been here. Um, so, you know, thinking like by the time we get to camp, he should be like factoring in, kind of similar to what Kilgore was uh, last year. He'll have a role somewhere on our defense and special teams. Uh, Brandon, uh, what does he bring in his second year? You mentioned a guy that has played kind of all over quarterback yeah. and all, <laughs> everything for Frisco. Um, what did what have you seen from him? And, and he's it seems like he might be one of your most physical guys. Yeah, I mean, he, well, I think I think we, if you watched us play last year or seen him on special, he showed up on special teams all the time. Like, he was the first one down on kickoff. Like, he made tons of plays. He knocked people out. Like, so the, that part of playing linebacker he has, it was just more so, again, the game slowing down for him, learning it. He's another guy who's playing both spots now. Um, he, he was kind of a guy because he was just really anxious all the time. That, that franticness that you have as a young player, Brandon had that. But now he's got that cool, like he's calm. He gets lined up, and he's starting to produce. So he's another guy that he just brings a different skill set. He's a he's a really big kid too. You know, he's a tall, long kid that can run. So um, he'll factor in somewhere as well. It's just a matter of again, I, I'm in a good spot. You know, with the linebacker room. I think we got a talented group, and we got different skill sets that will allow us to to be successful. And uh, Brandon, I think is going he's going to factor in there somewhere. Not to be overlooked, but Ahmad and Kill uh, and uh, Kobe are back as yeah. well. Uh, yeah. Kobe, in a way, kind of came out of nowhere. Ahmad, for sure. you know, a lot of people had high expectations for as well last year. What does it mean to have those two back, and how? What have you seen from them? Even though it sounds like they're just kind of getting, making yeah. sure they're staying sharp. Yeah, they're trying to uh, trying to stay oiled up, as we say. Uh, but those two guys, I man, I can really like, you know, rest my head knowing that I got those two guys. You know, I can hang my hat on them. They show up every day. They absolutely love football. You know, like you should, even when they're not going there, if I don't coach them, they're coaching them. And I've challenged both of them to take the next step in being leaders. 
um, and just be more vocal, just be more demanding of their teammates. And they've taken that challenge and they've done a great job. I've challenged them to take care of the room and pull the other guys along to make them match their level. Um, just trying to find different ways to challenge them. And every time I challenge those two, I, I, they, they set the table. You know, however they go, we go. Uh, and it's, a, it's fantastic that I can hang my hat on them. And I think that's another reason why Kilgore is so good, because he and Kobe are pretty close. And as you kind of watch their relationship and their dynamic, like you can see some of the things that Kobe does, how that, how that Kilgore pulls that out, and then that makes him better. Now, the young guys who are here, Zach, he sees Kilgore, oh my gosh, he was a freshman last year in his mindset. So Zach has no choice but to fall into that, right? And then you add another guy like Brandon Booker when he gets in in the summer. Like we're just, we're just, we have a very like structured room, but it starts with the leaders in the room and how they approach their, their football on a day-to-day -day basis. I was about to say, uh, Booker, what did you see from him in high school and, and you know, getting him on board yeah. kind of later in the process? Yeah, well, for, for, for him, I, you know, he's a guy that we targeted when we first got in. Actually, uh, Booker and Zach were two of the first guys that I saw when I got hired. Uh, I thought he was a really good athlete. Um, you know, just his size deal. But he actually was like, he ended up being like 210, 215 his senior year so he actually bulked up so that made me really excited because he's such a good athlete but he comes from a winning program he's another guy that absolutely loves football he, just, he fits like the, the rest of the room he's going to fit he's going to come in and feel like he's been there like forever you know he's just one of the guys that his mindset and his approach to football because uh, that's, that's a big thing for me just how guys approach football I love athletes guys who do a lot on the football field I like Zach Smith uh, but then Booker is just another football guy. You line him up anywhere, he's a football junkie. He like jumps in on Zoom to try to like see our meetings. Like he, he just, he's obsessed with it. You know, he, he didn't have school, I promise you he'd be here. But he wears me down after practice too. How we practice today, you know, what are we looking at? You know, what, what, what do I need to learn? So he's just, he's just like the rest of the guys. So when you add him in as another freshman, but I think he'll be, Physically, he's going to be a little bit more ready, like ready-made. He's not going to have to put on a ton of weight, and he has good athleticism. So, I, I mean, it's just got to see what he can do in the summer and get him ready, get him caught up and see what he can do. With the defensive line, uh, particularly the bigger bodies that no you question. guys have, Big um, uh, I think three or four, over 300 pounds, yeah. how much does that help your guys' flow and uh, be able to – Big time. Because it's part of the recruiting you know, pitch, too, when you start talking to, to Justin Medlock and say, hey, you know, you want to see what's going to be in front of you. And I told him, I showed him the bodies and the guys that was going to be in front of him. And his eyes, like, got really big. Because that just makes you a better player, right? If if they demand double team blocks or they demand attention up front, like, you know, that's ultimately going to help us. If they don't demand double teams, they're just going to work up to us quickly, right? And then we got to work our block destruction, which is part of the game. But if you got to – if they if they demand attention up front, it's only going to help us open up seams, allow us to be protected, and allow us to play down here. So we saw uh, Stone Eby at the end. Yeah, that was impressive. Right? I was – which linebacker is going to convince you that they're the best field? So actually, uh, so we had a uh, Quan and Kilgore had a discussion via text message last night. So I, I texted the group, asked them which one could kick. So those two guys were the first two to say, I, I got it. And then we ended up settling on Quan, uh, Quandus Burns, uh, because he was the older guy. So I had to say, hey, maybe next time we're going to go with Quan. We're going to go with the, the senior guy who's been here. We're going to hang our hat on that. But Kilgore was not happy about that. So when he gets over here, just ask him if, if he think he could have made the kicks any better. I'd be interested to hear what, I know he's going to say, he's going to say, yeah, absolutely, I would have made it.